And welcome back, everybody from all over the world. Yes, I know I said that big to however many people are listening. Well, listening and watching, just Correct. to clarify, we have our listening audience, and then we have our, our um, watching audiences on the different platforms where they're streaming. And thanks again to the amazing 102.5 FM for hosting the lift. And then y'all know I'm going to shout out my Eric on the other side, the engineer. He has a business. Y'all know we promote small businesses, so I would be remiss not to highlight that he has an engineering business and he is available. Maybe one day he'll drop in over here and give y'all his contact information. But I promote everybody in the room. We got <laughs> we got we got Shelton Beatty here, who's also a consultant. He does some things, and then some of my other guests have businesses. So I want to remember to highlight those, particularly since we're talking about money anyway. So we're going to jump in a little bit deeper. For those of you who kept your dolls right where they were, you know we were getting a little glimpse into the life of Dad Beatty and the lessons that he gave to his son as it relates to financial literacy. And so hopefully you got some of those takeaways that it's consistency, that it's planning, that it's nothing magical about it. It's being very intentional. Um, it's about setting goals. What yes. would you say some of the other major takeaways wow. were for those who are joining right now, but those who are also listening? Uh, you captured it well. Mm -hmm. But for a dad, too, it was being inclusive of something bigger than himself. Because yes. on that budget, he not only had savings, but he had his contributions to what he believed in. And mm -hmm. for us, that was our church, and that mm -hmm. was God. So mm -hmm. he also had that top. So he, in his giving or plan, it included something bigger than himself. Because yes. I do believe that if you don't have a goal that is bigger than yourself, you can nurture selfishness. And yes. if you have selfishness, uh, money is not enough to satisfy that. Because yes. if you make a million dollars and have an appetite of a million and two, you can still be broke yes. at a million dollar budget. Yes. So it's not about that. It's, it's about a discipline. In order to have discipline, there has to be a goal that is bigger than what you see. And yes. so for me, it is honoring the Lord. It is giving to my ministry. It is giving to something apart from me. So yes. generosity helps to curve that selfish nature and mm -hmm. appetite. I believe all of us face that and deal with yes. that unless we do something about that having more money won't answer the needs of yes. our lives. Money is just a means to get yes. somewhere and we're trying to determine where that's going to go. True. Right? And so let's let's dive in into this first segment. Unlearning the work hard your whole oh, life uh, type yes. of mindset. This, this idea um, so so granted your, your mom and dad had 11 children just the immediate imagery of that is, man, we got to work hard, we got to work hard, we got to yes. work hard. But there's a measure of it, true, where he probably did work hard, but he also worked wise and he worked strategically. True. And you saw his money go further than it ever could have gone. So let's just talk a minute about that. Work hard. What does work hard look like for you? What would you uh, say? What do you, what do you think? Of, what comes to mind when you think work hard? Okay, so <laughs> I'm drained already. When mm -hmm. I hear the word work right. hard, drained. And that's not life giving. Though some people do that, they say I gotta work hard, working hard for the money. I think mm -hmm. there was a song mm -hmm. that said working hard for the money. Mm -hmm. So but when you do that, oftentimes you burn out, mm -hmm. uh, you tire yeah. quickly. So instead of saying working hard, I would be be intentional, be mm -hmm. focused, mm -hmm. be direct, uh, have a goal in mind versus mm -hmm. just working hard because a person that is working hard but working in an area that is not producing fruit. This can be worthless, uh, and it can be uh, something that is cumbersome, but that doesn't yield the fruit you want. So I mm -hmm. would take some time on the front end to determine what is going to yield the result that I want. Yes. So that's a, a focus, that's a vision, that's something ahead of you that you can reach for it to that's going to produce for us. So what I've done in my life, I've looked for, and I'm conscious of doing this regularly, mm -hmm. I evaluate regularly. If I do something and I don't see the fruit of it, I change. Mm -hmm. I am, yes, I mm -hmm. pivot more quickly mm -hmm. versus saying, if I just work harder, work yes. harder in this area, just work yes. a little harder. Yes. Maybe it's not the area you need to be working in. Yes. Change that and yes. work where you can see some results and yes. results that are measurable. And I'm constant, I'm a big proponent of this. Let somebody else evaluate what you're doing because yes. we all can see from a, I guess, a tenant lens. Yes. But if we get someone else to say, uh, is that really working for you? Are you getting yes. much fruit from that? Because I've yes. seen people got the business, and I have family members who do this. Yes. They got this business, and one day I'll be this multi-millionaire. Oh. Yes. And, and I'm just going to look at it. the progress. Yes. So that's not that going to learn the work. math. No. Or math is. It's just not, not math. Do. Right. Certainly not. Right. And some people do that. But if you have someone else step in and say, you know what, five years of that, that's enough. Yes. Let's move on. Yes. And hopefully my, uh, well, I won't name the person, but I hope one of my family is <laughs> listening right 
like now. Please. <laughs> take give that up. up. Please turn the to 102.5 and yes. make sure you say Listen give that to up. This. And I'm telling you, so here's your prophetic word. <laughs> give that up. Give it here, up. Here's a sign from the Lord. It's being, it's being able then, Bishop, I think in a lot of ways to just really process what we think about what is our narrative around money. Right. So let's just say work hard. Then we often think that if it's hard, then yeah. we're making progress and True. that's a mindset True. right and there's a day there was a day when people would kind of I, I guess give themselves the badge of honor you work in two three four five jobs to oh, make yeah. and so i get to i get to tote that i don't want that testimony i don't right. want to i don't want to share that story neither so do i and i've heard people say i've never taken a vacation oh god i'm trained <laughs> by hearing you say that i went all year i didn't take one of my sick no. days i didn't take one of my personal times off. i know i'm not either right but there are large groups of people who are very proud of that yes they work so hard huh i worked so hard i didn't sleep at all last night i said okay that is not healthy yes Two hours to say, all, all yes. I need is two hours. Is yeah. that, that's not good. So then we can talk just from a pragmatic place. Then how do you take that philosophical thought about work hard and really process what does it look like in your day to day? So when I think about work hard, one of the reasons that we people work hard is because they want more, right? right? So many people work hard even when they get a raise and actually feel more exhausted because they go out and buy something extra and buy they something do. new. A way of reshaping that so that we're not always caught in the work hard is to understand that just because I get increase in promotion does not mean now I go and upgrade the house or the car right. or the whatever because right. then I never get to enjoy it because right. now I got to work extra hard right. just sometimes the vacation comes because right. I got the increase or because I got the promotion but I maintain my current status and it gives me the flexibility right mm -hmm. it's, it's unlearning that behavior so if you can speak kind of to that so that people understand how to translate it from the theoretical place that we're speaking to this is what that looks like then in your everyday living how do we break the cycle of working hard okay. what are some tangible things that we can do i certainly will give that and i'll give a uh, a picture just a picture for you to build in your mind to see where we want to pivot from mm -hmm. i have a testimony with my aunt my aunt was probably around in her 80s but she was still working in her mm -hmm. 80s and so instead of giving working her because life she had to or working because she wanted to be active, like greeting somewhere, no, working, she was working because, because she, she had, had to, to and the mindset of working hard all her life stayed okay. with her. So okay. even in her 80s, wherein she had grandchildren that she didn't visit because mm -hmm. she was still working, yeah, missing out on everything, missing much. out on the, yes. to me, it should be the best years of her life. Yes. But because she didn't change her mindset mm -hmm. and things in life didn't materialize the way she wanted them to, she was still in her 80s working, working hard. So that is a clear descriptor for anybody who's trying to just evaluate from an age place. What does working hard look like? It's having to work versus right. choosing to work Correct. in your latter years. If you're really trying to figure out, okay, when they're talking about working hard, what does that look like? It's having to work True. versus choosing to work. Right. When you're like, and I'm going to put it way back in your 40s, but we're going to move <laughs> up to this, but I'm just saying, there are some people who set a goal that by the time I'm 40 or by the time I'm 45 right. or by the time I'm 50 or 55 or 60 or 65, for each of us who's listening today, it's having to work instead of choosing to work right. beyond the years that you have designated that you desire to have a life of more freedom. Right? That's right. That's, That's exactly hard. right. That is exactly when right. When I got to go, That's exactly right. to go. That is exactly so, right. Yes, so she, she had she to had work to. at right. 80 years old. And so I wouldn't want uh, our listening audience or viewing audience to be in that place, yes. to miss out a life because you haven't been able to pivot to do some of those things. So how I would uh, structure or give some guidance and wisdom about working hard and kind of shifting from that mindset, I would say I would want to work smart, mm -hmm. meaning that uh, there's results that are coming my way. And in results coming my way, I would evaluate what do I really want. And in the things I really want, I don't mean by what society says is great Yes. or what my neighbor says is yes. wonderful because you could have a friend to get a new car and your car has been doing pretty good not, but right. you're saying someone's got a new one so i want one yes. no let's not be led by those desires only mm -hmm. let's mm -hmm. be led by what we know to be our purpose in life and what really matters to us so even when you deal with the conversation of finances you cannot separate that from understanding your purpose mm -hmm. and intent and your reason why yes. because if you haven't answered that trying to go down the path with developing yes. what money you need
need all that. Uh uh, because what we would do oftentimes is use money and some resources to to try to satisfy a need that hasn't been met. Yes. So I would say from the beginning when we deal with money, deal with person some peace within ourselves to understand what we really want mm -hmm. and then have a plan to get there. For me, my desire in life is to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That's mm -hmm. the natural personal mm -hmm. aspiration in life. Mm -hmm. So I get a joy out of assisting other people, imparting to other people, like mm -hmm. even now, mm -hmm. sharing and talking. Mm -hmm. This is the part of my life goal. So for me, doing this matters a lot. If I have the opportunity to do this, I'm satisfied. So then I don't need a new coat today. I don't right. need a, a new car today. Or I don't need some new shoes to feel good. I feel wonderful doing yes. what I'm called to do. Yes. That's key because then I'm satisfied. Then out of that, because I'm personally satisfied, I can then use the resources that I have to further this style of living. Yes. Doing that keeps me in a good healthy place because a person that is unwell would do unwell deeds or activities right. so right. first it starts off with being well yes. then from that having an objective look at what you need to progress and to move forward yes. so i cannot say a million dollars or two million dollars or yes. five hundred dollars no i do believe this way you can do well with whatever amount of money you have i'll yes. give another pet i love giving personal so you gonna make eric, you, he gonna, <laughs> listen to audience he gonna make eric flash that light that he don't even have today uh we gonna come right back please <laughs> the rest because he don't wave the sign to my break eric i'm coming all right so anyway y'all keep that down right here we're gonna come back he was almost about to have us turn to the text y'all i had to cut him off we're gonna come right on back to amazing 102.5 fm in just a few moments y'all stay right here with us <laughs> 